What's up guys, it's your boy DJ Richie Scott and we're back with another video. Now, thank you guys so much for the love and support on this new channel here. I know it's kind of outside of the norm of what we're used to talking about with reality TV news and all that kind of stuff like that. But you know, I think there's also a time and place for me to answer some questions that I get from you guys and to talk about some other things that are interesting to me. You know. Richie Sky in real life. Real life stuff, real life lessons and questions that you guys may have. So feel free to submit your questions in the comments down below for future video topics and we'll probably get to them at some point in the future. But for right now, the question that I get a lot of is this. <laughs> Why are you called DJ Richie Sky if you're not a DJ? Let's discuss, okay. So for those of you guys who don't know, I actually used to be a DJ. Um, before I became a DJ though, I was a rapper. Yes, oh yes, you would not have ever guessed that I was a rapper. I always wanted to be a little LL Cool J when I was growing up. So as a young kid, I was taking my dad's instrumental records and I was writing rhymes over top of them. And you know, kind of just going about my day-to-day -day life as a normal high schooler, but I was always, you know, writing, you know, either stories or books or rhymes or whatever the case may be. But I thought to myself as I was growing up, I was like, I don't know if I could really do this as a full-time career. And my parents were like, you going to college. So off to college I went. I went to Virginia Tech for undergrad and then I went to Michigan State University for grad school because honestly, I did not know what I wanted to do upon graduation. Now there was always a part of me that wanted to work in news and entertainment. When I was a kid, I actually wanted to be on Entertainment Tonight. I thought I was gonna be that guy that was on Entertainment Tonight. It was just something in my head. I, don't, I didn't know how I was gonna get there, but I felt like that was gonna be my calling. So anyway, um, I get out of school and I actually go to work, okay? I go to work at Bank of America in sales and then I end up in communications and then I end up moving to DC. Now, it was when I got back to DC and I'm working as a technical writer that I started to really get back into music. I'd already chosen the name Richie Sky because it was a take on Reach the Sky. Get it? Reach the Sky? Okay, anyway. Um, so I had already chosen that as a name, you know, as my sort of like DJ uh, rapper name and I was already making music. Now, unbeknownst to most people, I've put out albums that were on iTunes, but I actually have taken those down because I just felt like, you know, as I was entering this whole new phase of my life, I just kind of wanted to leave that behind. And I felt like it was great at the time when I was doing the music and I still have that music on my iTunes. I still listen to some of that music. I just felt like, I, why? I'm not really trying to be a rapper anymore, so I just took it all down. But you can still find it out there in certain places if you look. Um, so for me, I started DJing because I was actually hosting a YouTube show and we started doing a, I think it was a once a month happy hour. We were doing a happy hour once a month, the first Friday happy hour. And my friend that I was hosting it with said, you should DJ the happy hour. Now granted, I did not know a thing about DJing, but I did know good music. And I was always bringing the music to my friend's parties, to the house parties. I'm on my little MacBook or whatever, I was playing that music, okay? Now it was a playlist, but I was still playing the music. Anyway, so I started, okay, I said, let me start playing this music. Let me stand behind this table and control the music. So I'm literally doing that and I'm trying to learn how to mix, but I'm doing so by push, like pushing the, the, uh, the explosion button for a sound effect every time I wanted to change the song. Now to me, it felt like the audience was loving it, but I just think that they were maybe drunk. You know what I'm saying? Regardless, I started getting booked as a DJ. So this is when I learned a life lesson, okay? Just do it. Whatever it is that you wanna do, just start doing it, okay? The people will follow, and that they did. So, with that being said, I had somebody tell me, they called me out. One of my friends called me out, yes he did. He was like, you know what? If you're gonna be doing this, you need to actually learn how to mix, okay? So I bought a board, I got my first board, it was a little mini board, and I started teaching myself how to mix. From that point forward, it was on and popping. I mean, I was at 
New York Pride doing stuff. I was in Chicago DJing. I was in Puerto Rico DJing. The next thing I know, I'm like kind of everywhere at that point. I'm like, okay, this is this is cool. So I said, you know what? I need to move to LA because I need to jumpstart my career. I need to really get things popping, okay? Because I need to be in Vegas DJing on somebody's festival. Now, I never made it to Vegas to DJ a festival, but I did make it to Vegas, but we'll get there in a second, okay? What did happen along the way, though, was I ended up doing pride festivals in LA, as well as some house parties and some ski trips and stuff like that. I think I DJed in Mexico. I was kind of all over the place still DJing once I got to LA. But what I noticed was something about the music industry started to change. And I really can't pinpoint the moment that it started to change, but it did. And maybe it was the inception of mumble rap. Y'all know what I'm talking about. And I'm not gonna show my age too much by getting into that, but I just feel like when I started DJing, it was because I wanted to take people on a musical journey. I wanted to be able to take you from, you know, uh, down south, you know, Miami bass, Baltimore house music, you know, to some top 40s. I wanted to give you some dance hall. I wanted to give you some Caribbean vibes. You know, I wanted to give you some DC go-go. I wanted to do it all. But what I started to understand was as I continued along my DJ journey, especially being a black DJ, it seemed as though, you know, most of what I was expected to do was going to be, you know, hip hop and R&B. Now, that's, there's nothing wrong with that, but the way that hip hop has been moving in the past couple of years, to me, it just hasn't been as exciting. You know, the people I felt like they weren't really dancing in the clubs like I wanted to feel like. And so it started to feel like work as I was DJing. And I just felt like, I don't know what happened to music along the way that just made me feel like it was losing something. So I said to myself, okay, you know what? You have a couple of choices in this regard. You can either continue to DJ and give your all to it, or you can just quit altogether. And so at that point, I just said, you know what? I'm gonna quit altogether. So I remember one of my last gigs in Vegas, and I had finally made it to Vegas. But I remember the entire time thinking to myself, because the gig was from, I think I DJed from like two to 4 a.m. And I was just thinking to myself, this is going on forever. You know how like when you at work and you feel like a whole hour has gone by and it's only been five minutes? That's how I was feeling. So I said at that moment, I said, this is it. But unfortunately, well, it really wasn't it because Pride came up around in LA again, and Pride is an event that you don't turn down, right? You don't turn down LA Pride in um, Los Angeles. Shout out to Brandon Anthony and the crew and all those people out there that put on an amazing LA Pride. But you don't turn that down because it is one of the biggest events in West Hollywood, okay, of the year. It's the event of the year. So for me, you know, my last summer in LA, I think that was 2018, I did Pride my last time. That was my last DJ event. And I absolutely loved it. I felt like I went out with a bang and I felt like I began my career in news shortly thereafter. I had kind of always been in news, but officially as a morning show host in Miami, I started that journey two months later. So to me, I ended on the perfect note. So for those of you guys who are wondering, you know, well, why is he DJ Richie Scott if he's not a DJ? That is the reason why that's the history behind the name. And then once I got verified on Instagram, it's not easy to change your name after you've been verified on Instagram. So I just had to leave it as DJ Richie Scott in order to keep the branding consistent across the board. So that's the story with me being a DJ and then quitting being a DJ. Sometimes I wanna get back into it, but the thought of DJing a party, listen, when it comes to partying, I wanna get to the party late and I wanna leave early because you should never be at a party when the lights come on, okay? 
that's one lesson that you need to learn in life. Anyway, that's it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. A little story time for you guys. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you have not subscribed to the channel, please go ahead and do so. Hit that subscribe button. Let's get these numbers up and I will catch you in the next video. Wait, what?